Hey everyone, Elijah here with the last next guide you'll ever need. Many come to next because they see her profit per hour on the OSRS wiki and want a piece of that pie. And who can blame them? She's a top for a reason. However, don't be fooled. It can take many dozens of hours to have that profit land in your lap. So don't walk in expecting it to be like Zora or Vorkath when you make profit overnight. In this guide, I'm going to cover everything about Nex for a complete beginner so that I don't miss any information or leave you feeling ill-informed. I'll also cover many plugins and tactics you can use to reduce the complexity of the challenge and easily get your first kills. What is Nax? Nex is the fifth general. She's the fifth God Wars boss inside the God Wars dungeon, and she is by far the hardest by an order of magnitude. For example, in a duo with max gear at other God Wars bosses, people can do hundreds of kills in a single trip, but at Nex in a duo, you can do one kill per trip. For this reason, she is tackled in a number of different group sizes, ranging from masses with 20 plus players down to duos with just two people, and solos for some of the most insane players in the game. Why should you defeat Nex? Like many of the God Wars bosses, Nex has some very powerful drops. The best in slot melee armor, the Torva helmet, the Torva chest plate, the Torva plate legs, the Zarite van braces, the best in slot range glove slot, the Zarite crossbow, the best in slot crossbow, and one of the best spec weapons in the entire game, the ancient god sword, and all these mean that her average rare drop is valued at nearly 300 million GP. So despite being far more difficult and you can't get as many kills per hour as other bosses, she still has the best profit per hour average in the game. She is also great if you can find some small teams or duo partners who enjoy it, because then you can avoid those long dry streaks by being able to split your drops. How do I get there? In order to reach next, you can travel to the Gone Wars dungeon, of which there is many methods. A house portal after completing making friends with my arm to the herb patch and then running to the boulder. A redirect teleport scroll on the house tablet to Trollheim, casting the Trollheim teleport on a regular spellbook, or using any of the combat achievement diary reward hilts. However, before you can fight next, you must complete the frozen door key mini quest. This requires getting a key fragment from every single other God Wars boss, this is a 100% drop chance from each of the main bosses, or a 1 in 20 drop from their minions. You can then head through the door to the south of the God Wars dungeon and enter this door. From here, you enter an area where you can gain KC on the enemies between Nex's room. Now what do I mean by KC? Killing enemies will gain you essence counted here, which is absorbed from killing enemies in the area. You can then use the essence on the door to enter the bank room before Nex, at which point you can re-gear, set up your Nex inventory, and then head in to fight Nex. I would suggest while you're learning, not gaining more than 100 stacked KC, as deaths are not an infrequent occurrence, especially in trios and small teams. If you're more experienced, I'd suggest stacking up to 400 KC. This allows you to kill Nex for quite a while before having to set out and gain more. What is the Nex encounter? Brief summary. Nex is a complex yet consistent encounter with five primary phases. In each phase, she gains new abilities and activates one of her four minions, except in the last phase where she heals herself. I'll detail each of these phases later on, and I don't want to get too deep into it just yet. What stats do I need? Firstly, evaluate whether you're going to use range versus melee. Melee is much better and allows for faster and more consistent kills. However, learning melee is a little bit more difficult, but much more worth it in the long run. If you're doing range early, you don't need to worry about the melee stat requirements. However, if you're doing melee, you need range and melee stats. Stat requirements get more strict as team size decreases. In masses, I'd recommend base 70s. In mini masses, 75 to 80. In small teams, 85 plus. In trios, 90 plus and in duos, 90 plus, but more realistically, probably 99s. High defense level and magic level is always better, as magic level is the bulk of your magic defense, and your defense level can save you some damage from Nexus melee. What gear do I require? For ranged only as a minimum setup, I would recommend this. The dragon crossbow is only 1% worse than the ACB, so not really a big deal. God Dehyde, plus Dehyde boots, dragon ruby belts E, However, I would highly recommend completing the Kandarin Hard Diary as the bolt proc increase will make up a large amount of your damage over the fight. This can give you at about 4 to 6% damage increase. For melee, you also need to bring the range setup with the crossbow, and you also want to bring the fang along with carols as a minimum. What if I have more gear than that? For an upgrade order, for ranged, I would recommend upgrading your gear to Masori and getting the Twisted Buckler as priority. Then once you've got enough money, you can upgrade to the Zarat crossbow, Zarat band braces, the Bagasian boots, and finally also bring a Tebow switch for minions. For melee, Upgrading is a little bit more complicated. Getting Masori armor is actually great for both melee and range, along with the Twisted Buckler for your crossbow. Getting an Avernic Defender is a great investment, but obviously the downside being you can't sell it. Getting full Bandos and then upgrading to full Torva. And finally, getting a Twisted Bow for the minions. What should my inventory look like? When I was learning, and I would highly recommend this from experience, bring as few switches as possible, even if you're an experienced player. This allows you to bring as many brews as you possibly can, 
I would recommend at maximum a four-way switch while you're learning on your very first kill. You can upgrade to those eight-way switches a bit later. Under the assumption that you're using melee, I would recommend two super combats, one ranging potion, five restores, your runes for summon thralls, and the rest is bruise. If you're using range, simply swaps the super combats for ranging potions. What other tools and plugins can I use to make this even easier? I would highly recommend using Nex Nostalgia. This adds voice lines to the encounter, which makes the mental load reduced as you can take the audio cues from these triggers as the next phases, special abilities, or minions becoming active. I would also highly recommend getting the Radius Markers plugin and using these two markers setup. This shows you Nex's max range and her reset range. Lastly, I'd also highly recommend and ground markers. You can import my ground markers in the description. This makes it easy to know where you can reset next, where you can stand, and just reduces the mental load a bit. You can also get boss monster HP percentage. This lets you set five distinct markers for different breakpoints of her health. This is when she'll summon each of her minions. I also have this information marked out on tiles on the ground. Just having redundancy in multiple places makes it easier to remember exactly where and what you're doing at any point in the fight. What are the main mechanics in depth? So as I mentioned earlier, the next fight makes up five phases. There's a lot of information to cover, but don't worry, it's simpler than it sounds. Each of the five phases has two special abilities she will use, and she will always alternate between these two attacks. So she'll always use a different special than the last special she just used. And other than that, the core mechanics while attacking Nex or her minions applies to every single phase. So really, you only have to learn a couple things at a time. Basically, you will damage Nex until she loses 20% of her health, then her minion will become active, You'll switch to the minion, when it dies, next will phase, and you will go back onto her until she loses another 20% of her health. Repeat until you get through all five phases and next dies. And it's easy to remember because it's the same order on which you unlock the relevant ancient magic spells. Smoke, then Shadow, Blood, Ice, and lastly, Zaros. So firstly, I will cover the special attacks for each of the phases and how to handle slash avoid them. Then I will cover the core mechanics of the fight that you can apply to each and every phase. Keep in mind that all these special attacks will continue throughout her entire phase, even when she activates her relevant minions. Smoke from 100% to 80%. You want to make sure that you're always in melee range of her during this phase while attacking her. This is true of every phase except phase 2. Special 1, the cough attack. Next we'll say, let the virus flow through you, and she'll target the furthest enemy with the lowest magic defense, and then they will begin to cough. This will drain your stats and prayer over a few seconds. You can bring a Slayer Helmet to reduce this, but the wiki is wrong. Your stats will still get reduced by half, even with the Slayer Helm equipped. For this reason, I simply suggest waiting for the cough attack to finish, drinking one dose of Retor, one dose of Super Combat, and going back to attacking her like normal. Just make sure you don't run near allies, as you can spread the cough and reduce everyone's stats. Special Attack 2, no escape. When she says, there is, she will face one of the four cardinal directions. When she does this, move to the any other directions, and once her true tile is moving back to her, you can move back safely and attack her. Rare special. In phase one, this is the only phase where a rare special can happen, there is a very small chance that instead of using one of her other attacks, she will randomly drag a member of the group towards her, stunning them and disabling their prayer. Just make sure if you get targeted, quickly turn back on your overheads and go back to the fight like normal. Shadow. 80 to 60%. Her first special, Embrace Darkness. Her attacks deal damage based on distance, so use range attacks and attack from far back as possible. If you have a crossbow instead of the twisted bow, you should dance from max range when you attack. Second special, Fear the Shadow. She summons a circle under you. Simply click off it when you hear the voice line and see the circle. Keep in mind she does this fight fast, so you only have two or three ticks to respond. Always prioritize moving off this over things like switching gear, prayer, or attacking. Phase 3, Blood. This is the phase where you want to be finished the fastest, as the longer she's in this phase, the more she heals and prolongs the fight. For this reason, unless you're doing melee phase 2, I suggest saving up your special attack to 100%, and ideally using two Void Waker specs on this phase rather than using any in phase 2. Special 1, I demand Blood Sacrifice. She'll highlight someone orange and they have to move out of the inner radius marker or she'll deal damage to everyone on the team and heal for the damage dealt. This one will certainly annoy teams the most as you're actively damaging them, draining their supplies and making the boss last longer. Special 2, a siphon will solve this. This special has some explaining but hopefully it'll all make sense. She'll summon 1 to 2 blood reavers. These will heal her every time they attack and also heal Nex for their remaining HP when they die. They will die passively after a short period of time. Also, until a Blood Reaver is damaged, Nex will be healed for any of the damage dealt to her, so make sure when you hear the audio cue, click off her immediately, you don't want to heal her a 70. Most groups or trios will attack the Blood Reavers once, wait till Nex becomes active again, and switch back to her until 
the Blood Reavers die. However, this leaves the Blood Reaver to heal next for the whole rest of its spawn cycle and heal its remaining HP at the end. This becomes a bit tricky because damaging the Blood Reaver instead of next will mean that she takes slightly longer to phase, so ideally you want to be phasing next before more Reaver spawn. However, especially in trios, I think that if only one Reaver spawns, the whole trio should commit to killing it, and this will stop next healing as well as gaining the extra health when it dies. However, if two spawn, either you should kill one and get back on next, or kill neither and simply deal some damage and get back on next. This is because you don't want to spend all your time killing the minions or you'll be in the blood phase forever and she'll continue to heal and damage you. A word of warning though, the blood reavers don't count towards your total damage and MVP slash drop chance on a kill, meaning it is somewhat selfless to kill them. Unless the whole team agrees to this strategy, you're personally throwing your drop chance a bit lower than everybody else. I personally think teams should adopt the strategy that if one spawns it kill it, but people are going to do what they do. I just thought I'd warn you. In this phase, you want to keep your distance from your fellow teammates as she attacks in a 3x3 area and heals for the damage dealt. So stacking up or standing next to each other will prolong the phase dramatically, increasing the chance you get more reavers, prolonging it even further, or someone accidentally healing it with a blood sacrifice, or hitting the siphon. Phase 4, Ice. Her first special ability in this phase is Contain This. She'll put a block of ice one tile around her, and if you're caught in it, your prayers will drop and you'll take a lot of damage. However, she cannot be attacked with melee during this phase, so simply stand one tile back, put on your ranged weapon for two attacks, and then switch back to melee. For some learning, switching gear for ranged for only two attacks and then switching back can be a lot to juggle if you've never done the encounter before. So even if you just do a one or two way switch and throw some Hail Mary bolts, there's a better chance than doing nothing. There is that rare chance you could Hail Mary get some Ruby Bolt Pox specs, and it's better than doing nothing. It's better to get two bad shots off than one good, and then miss Fang hits as you panic switch back to your melee gear. There's been plenty of times while running or moving, I only swap just my crossbow and send a Hail Mary bolt, only to get a Ruby Bolt spec before switching back to my Fang. It's not likely, but it's better than nothing. I'd also suggest being really careful of this attack if you're trying to reset Nex while attacking her minion during this phase as it's possible for her to freeze you with an ice barrage under her, and you can't escape, meaning you're forced to take 60 damage and have your prayer disabled. This combined with some unlucky chip damage could easily one-shot you. Her second special, Die Now in a Prison of Ice, she picks a random player and traps them in a 3x3 ice prison and disables their prayer. You can only be freed by an ally breaking you out with a crush or stab weapon, so the fang. This effect can also trap multiple allies if you're standing on the same tile, so be really careful not to try to help free your teammates too quickly and accidentally get trapped in there with them. If you're targeted, quickly make sure to put your overhead prayer back on and hope a teammate can come free you. If no one is coming to help and you're certain you're going to take damage, you can switch your overhead to range which will take half the damage. This ability has a max hit of 75, so believe me, you want to halve it if you can. Combine some unlucky chip damage, and as possible, she can one-shot you from full health with this. Final phase, Zaros. In this final phase, she gains 500 HP and heals her up to 1180. This phase is where you will take most of the damage from the entire fight, especially in smaller teams like duos and trios. Her attacks are far more accurate and powerful in this final phase, hitting hard even through prayer. At any point during the stage, if you're overwhelmed, put up Protect from Melee and stand under her while you drink Brew. This will stall a little bit and give you some precious moments to drink that life-saving potion. During this phase, she will rotate through three different overheads in this rotating order. Soul Split, that heals her when she attacks, Deflect melee, meaning she will take no melee damage and reflect damage back at you, and no overhead. She'll do nothing special. She will then cycle back to soul split. During deflect from melee, you can either use two void worker specs, which count as magic damage, or switch to your crossbow and range gear for three shots, and then switch back to melee. During this phase, she will target a player for melee attacks. If she targets you, protect from melee immediately. If she's targeting someone else, switch back to prey mage. She will typically only target you for three attacks before changing to a new target. Now as a final summary, I just wanted to put all the overheads you should be praying in each phase here, so they'll all be summarized at the end. In smoke phase, you want to pray melee when she's attacking you, and mage otherwise. In shadow phase, you want to be praying range the entire time. In blood phase, you want to be praying mage the entire time. In ice phase, you want to be praying mage if she's not attacking you, and melee if she is. And Zaras, you want to be praying melee if she's attacking you, and mage if she isn't. Now that we've identified the entire fight and the strategy you should take to kill it, I'm going to go through some core mechanics that are important for every single phase. Firstly, and this one might be the most important, when drinking brews and restores, drink them fast. You should be going brew, 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 restore, potion. This will immediately heal you up, restore your stats, and let you get back into dealing damage. A lot of people, myself included, especially when learning, get panicked and end up drinking six to nine doses of brew, not being restored up, and then your stats are reduced down, meaning it's more likely she's gonna hit you and hit you harder. Step unders. 
Because the crossbow and fang are five tick weapons, but next attacks on four tick, you want to try step under her for one tick between attacks. It's quite simple. You simply click one tile under her from where you're at after she attacks, and then immediately click on her again. This will reduce her damage dramatically, and especially in the blood and Zaros phase, it will also reduce her healing. Next reset. During many sieges of next, if she's targeting you, you can step under her to reset her. There are two ways to do this. Run under resets, this is the most common. When Nex is one tile away from you, you click under her center tile, she will get confused and snap back to the middle. Note that she will not snap back to the center. If you reset her near the middle of the room, she will instead jump somewhere else. The other option, which is much more difficult and easier to die doing, is one tick resets. Set up your rune light to allow shift click walk under on Nex so that you do not target her for attack when you hold down shift then hold down shift and click on her center tile every tick until she resets. If you use my plugin setup described in my first video, you can see the tile change color each time and you can simply click the center tile of her each time. However, note, if you mess up either of these resets, she will not reset correctly and will instead run you down. This is especially dangerous in the shadow phase where she can tick you for 30 to 40 damage every single tick while she's next to you. So make sure if you don't do the reset, run like hell, drink lots of brew. It is also possible while kiting her if you gain a one tile gap to run one tile back and reset her. Spreading the cost. There is a debate on if you should bring the Slayer Helm. However, in both cases, Slayer Helm or not, you will still need to drink exactly one dose of restore and one dose of re-super combat in order to get back to full stats. The wiki says it should negate it entirely. I don't know if this was intended and they didn't implement it correctly, however it doesn't. If it did negate it entirely, I would 100% suggest bringing the Slayer Helm, however currently it is not worth it. Make sure to not stand next to teammates and spread the cough, and be careful where your attacks might drag you through to the teammates while you're coughing. Positioning. You should ideally be on all different sides of necks at all times. This makes it very visually clear when, who and when she's focusing, and this is very important, especially in the final phase. This is also critical if you're doing melee phase 2. Stalling. If you want to eat or avoid some damage and Nex is targeting you and you're getting overwhelmed, you can stall her. You can either right click follow on the teammate under Nex to stall her, or you can do the shift click walk under method to buy some time to drink some potion and get some prayer back and stall her damage. Melee phase 2. So melee phase 2 is where you hit Nex with a fang instead of from range. This is possible in trios with bandos, you don't require Torva. How instead of doing the one hit step under method described earlier, you instead want to stall next bef right before the point she would reset, so about 5 or 6 ticks. This allows your teammates to hit for free damage the entire time she is trying to hit you. So if you focused by next, you run under her for 5 or 6 ticks, and then run out for one hit, run back under her again. This keeps stalling and makes the team take substantially less damage. Then when next switches targets, you will get the free hits while your teammate stalls for you. You want to make sure your whole team has the Void Waker and uses one spec at the very start of the kill so that you have two specs saved up for this phase. This isn't mandatory, you can use the Fang spec instead, but Void Walker specs from all players will make this phase go very fast and the less time you spend here, the better. This is easily the most dangerous part of the fight if you're doing melee. Some final quick tips, don't void walk a spec after Nex says I demand a blood sacrifice unless you do it immediately. If you end up being delayed or switching gear, drinking a potion, etc. You could accidentally spec her while she does her siphon special, healing her for 100 plus damage and wasting your special attack. Always plan around the what if it is me next. Something I learned from a higher tier rating in World of Warcraft is that even when there's 20 people on a team and the ability the boss uses next only targets two players, instead of being surprised when you're one of the players chosen, plan ahead and think, if I'm chosen for the next reset, I will be ready to click this tile. If I'm chosen for blood sacrifice, I will be prepared to run out of here. Always be ready for if the next attack could be you, if you need to break a teammate out of the ice, etc. That way, even if you're not targeted for the mechanic, you're ready and not going to let your team down. So there we are, a completed guide on next. I hope this gets your first kills and good luck on the drops. Found something in this video interesting? Consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing. Another massive thank you to my supporters on Patreon who keep this channel alive and allow me to put maximum effort into each and every video. You can support from as little as 2 bucks a month. Thank you to my Lygian tier patrons, 22x7, Slow Civic, and thank you to the rest of my patrons of all tiers. I suggest checking out the Discord as I'll be doing future episodes of Setup Surgeon. If you want your setup analyzed, go check out the Discord channel, check out the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, and I hope something in this video helped you reach your next level.